We'll go to Kevin, who's on the line in Manhattan, Kansas. Kevin, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken, thanks for taking my call today. Sure, how can I help? I'm, I'm, I'm calling regarding a son that I have who's uh, 33 years old, who's lost, currently um, is not employed. Uh, he graduated from college about 10 years ago with a degree in chemical engineering. Uh, has never had a job, uh, lived with me that whole time, and has recently moved out um, into another home that I own in another, another state. And I just want to know kind of more what advice you would have for me and or him how to g break into the job market or what he can do at this point in time. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm afraid. And, I don't know all the details. But I'm afraid that the thing that has to happen for him first is some serious hardship. Feels like this is a kid who's very, very intelligent, gets a degree in chemical engineering, comes back to live with you, has lived with you for 10 years, has never had a job. That correct. means he means he didn't feel like he needed to go get a job. The question is why? Why has he not had a job for 10 years? Tell me your opinion. My he moved um, to California with his girlfriend shortly after graduation, and he was out there a year, never found a job, and then moved back home. Um, I, he doesn't have any self-esteem. He has really doesn't have much initiative. He's not a go-getter, self-starter, and I think his self-esteem and his self-worth and stuff has kept him from, you know, and being in a comfortable environment. You know, yeah, um, I think it's a combination of those things. I'll get to the yeah. comfortable environment in a minute. What, yes. in your opinion, do you, are you aware? Is there an is there an incident? Was there a, something that happened that has made him have such low self esteem? Um, just probably not having success, I guess. Or, um, I mean, he got great. Uh, grades while he was in high school, and but probably wasn't quite as successful in college. Um, it may stem a long time ago when his mom and I got divorced mm -hmm. uh, when he was a fairly young age. Um, some of those personal issues, um, logically, he knows that he deserves to have a better life. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something. Really... That's it right there. Go ahead. That's it right there. So we have two things going on, Kevin. Number one, we have to get to the source of of why he is so listless, why he is just floating. And it is a, there is a personal issue. You've identified it. You're his dad. You know it. He's got low self-esteem. And I wouldn't say it's probably from the divorce. I would say it is highly, highly likely that, th that there are multiple issues, but a lot of it stems from the divorce. That's not to blame you and your wife. It's just a reality. A young kid like that, mom and dad leave. Does he think it's his fault? They, you guys didn't want to be together. This is a lot of things. He needs some counseling, number one. Number and he, two. And he, and he did have that counseling until he just recently moved. But what was the, um, what the counselor say? What they say? Well, I wasn't a part of those counseling sessions, so I really don't know. Okay, but he didn't share some... with you. He didn't share with you, hey, this is what I've been dealing with. Not exactly, no. All right, I think it's no. time for a man-to-man -man conversation. He's how old? 33. I think it's time for a man to man. He's he's uh, he's back in the local area, but he's moved out. Correct. Correct. Well, that's good news. I was going to tell you to kick him out if he hadn't moved out. No, You've made it too comfortable. Months. You've made it yep. too comfortable for him. He's had no yep. reason to fly. Why would a bird want to fly if it gets to sit in the warm nest and mom drops off the worms every day? That's kind of not his fault. And again, I'm not beating up on you, Kevin. I'm just telling you, at some point, we got to kick these little birds out of the nest, and that's when they learn to stretch the wings. And so I think it is man-to-man -man time. Hey, son, here's the deal. And you say whatever's on your heart. You apologize for what you need to apologize for. Say what you need to say. Whatever. I'm not going to tell you what to say, but one of the things that you need to have a conversation with them about is, I need to know how I can help you best and if the counseling didn't finish it, we need to get there. And I'm committed to help you get healthy. I'm not going to support you anymore. You can't come back and live with me. I'm not going to support you financially. I've blown it there. I've made things too easy for you. But one thing I do want to do is is, is have a chance to, to find out from you man to man what's going on. 
I don't need to know your deepest, darkest secrets if you don't want to tell me, but I need to have an idea of what's holding you back, what the professional counselors say, because I want to pray for you or I want to support you in that way to get you healthy. All right? That's the first step. Now that he's out on his own, he's going to have to stand on his own two feet. Um, but I think that's the conversation that has to happen first. And then say, look, I listened to this guy called Ken Coleman, and this is what he talks about. This is his philosophy. How does this ring with you? Would you be willing to uh, meet with me another time and let's walk through your top talents and your top passions? Just man to man, just as your dad, loving on you. Can, would you be willing to have that conversation, do that homework, and come back and let's talk about it? And then can I walk alongside of you and let's see if we can figure out what your sweet spot is? Uh, would you be willing to call the show? You know, he needs to come to that realization of, wait a second, I have a lot to give. And there's somebody out there who needs me to be me. And despite the pain and despite all the stuff that's that's happened, despite the fact that I'm, you know, been out of school and haven't had a job in a decade, none of that is something that he needs to be ashamed of. He needs to say, all right, that was the season. And I'm going to walk out of that. It's like he's been walking around with a cloud, you know, and he's got to step out of that into a new future. So, again, it comes down to I spoke on this issue to 6,000 people in Dallas the other day. And you ought to have seen the reaction in the room. People in tears. Listen, this process works, Kevin. It works. Figure out what he does best, what he loves to do most, what he would love to do, what he dreams of. He's dreamed about something at some point. He is good at stuff. You know he is. The guy managed to get a degree in chemical engineering. What sets his soul on fire? If you could snap your fingers. I'd look at the kid and say this, Kevin. Hey, but if I could snap my fingers and give you – uh a job, a career, doing something, no strings attached, no education. You don't have to go do anything. You just get to step into it today, and you get to make plenty of money. What would it be? Keep pressing him on that. He's got an answer. I do this with callers all the time. 